So the first exercise in set B is your squats. Now, you'll notice this one is no load axial, okay? Because most people at this stage of the program, weeks three and four, aren't really ready for you know, compressive load on their knee, okay? So we don't put any load on here. There's no weights with this one. The load we get is your band. So while I'm waiting for your VMO to fire up a little bit, get a bit stronger, while I'm waiting for a bit of time, a bit of strength, a bit of conditioning, I'm gonna get you working on more and more and more glute because that'll then, when you're ready to put some load on, your glutes increase a little bit more, it can handle the load, okay? So, band on again, just like you had with the clams. Make sure you have it nice and flat. Okay, so get that thing flat. Again, it doesn't have to be a big band, but if, you know, if you're a bit bigger, a bit stronger, of course you can have a bigger band. Now, with all squats, what do you do? Well, make sure your feet are nice and wide, okay? Knees need to be out over your feet. Don't have your knees rolling in, okay? And this is going to teach you a bit of a better squat patterning as well. So, you know, there's no point putting weight on if you can't squat correctly. So get your squat pattern sorted first in this sort of weeks three and four. And then next stage, of course, you're gonna put some weight on and then you get some real strengthening going on. So this stage here, what I like to do, put my hands in this position because this is where I hold the kettlebells when we put load on, okay? So we're not doing a back squat. We're gonna be doing a front squat in time. So you're best to start with your hands in this position. Now, when you squat down, just work on going to just above 90 degrees. So if I show you this way, you're just going down to about that point there. No point going low, okay, because you're just gonna round your back out a little bit more, and your strength down low is probably not good enough yet, all right? So I don't like people going sort of too low that they lose neutral spine, okay? So the best safe way of doing it is just keep the hips a little bit above the knee line, all right? But at this point here, I can keep my back nice and straight, hands in the middle, and trying to keep not excessive amount of curve. So don't let your back round out into a big curve. At the same time, don't let it round under, all right? So hands in here, keep your upper body upright, down to there, and back up again. Now, make sure when you squat, your knees are bending at the same sort of ratio as your hips. So don't sort of let your knees go forward and then try and squat. Like at the same time, don't sort of let your knees do nothing and squat and do sort of half a deadlift, all right? Your knees need to go forward as your hips go backwards, okay? Now some people might have a bit of patella femoral pain if they let their knees go too far forward because they're getting a bit of shear load. And that might be because their VMO is not good enough or their glutes aren't good enough, that sort of thing. So if that's one of you, you just work to the point where yeah, the pain's about to start there, then you come back up. As you get stronger, as the weeks go, remember you've got two weeks in this stage, you may find you go, oh, you know, by sort of day 10, oh, I can get a bit lower, okay? Because you have to get that full range like that before you stack the weight on, okay? And it may be that you have to work on this week for a bit longer than two weeks to get that normal movement pattern before you load it. And that's a very important tip. Make sure you get your range before you start loading up the joint. Otherwise, you're just gonna run into problems, all right?